one-handed knot. The suture ends are held crosswise. In this example, the right hand is the knotting hand and the left hand holds the pulling thread. The tying thread crosses underneath the pulling thread. The left suture end is held between the thumb and index finger of the right hand and led around the ulna margin of the right fifth finger. The right hand thus describes a supination movement. The left hand applies the right suture part palmarily over the right middle finger. The sutures then cross each other. The right suture part is now led underneath the left end by using the end phalanx of the right middle finger and clamped between the right thumb and ring finger. The fixed suture is now led through the pulling thread, forming the first loop. For the sailor's knot, the second loop is described by use of the opposed technique. Here this is performed with the right hand using the so-called index finger technique. The left suture end, which is now on the right, is held between the thumb and index finger of the right hand and led radially over the last joint of the right index finger. The right suture part, which is now on the left, is led to the right so that it crosses the left suture end underneath. The right index finger now moves below the left suture end, draws it upwards and forms the second loop. In order to lay this loop flat, the hands have to be crossed clockwise prior to applying opposed pulling force. This is how the sailor's knot is tied. Alternatively, the second loop can also be produced with the left hand using the middle finger technique. The suture in the left hand then becomes the tying thread. The left hand again makes a supination movement and thus crosses the pulling thread. The tying thread is again clamped between the thumb and ring finger and wound around the pulling thread. In order to lay this opposed loop flat, the hands again have to be crossed clockwise. For the granny knot, the second loop is made in the same form as the first. Again, the left suture end is held between the right thumb and index finger and led around the ulna margin of the fifth finger of the right hand. The pulling and tying threads are crossed, so that the tying thread can be clamped between the right middle and ring fingers. Using these two fingers, the tying thread is now pulled through the produced loop. In order to lay the knot flat, the hands have to be crossed anti-clockwise by 180 degrees. Now the loop can be pulled tight. Alternatively, the second loop can be produced by using the index finger of the left hand. It leads the tying thread over the pulling thread and now moves under the tying thread. The index finger pulls it upwards and thus forms the second loop. Again, the hands must be turned anti-clockwise to be able to lay the loops flat.